Well, ladies and gentlemen, FA Cup final, Manchester City versus Manchester United, and we need to speak about it. And let's cut to the chase, shall we? So, of course, 24 hours before this game, maybe even a little above 24 hours, Jacob Steinberg drops an exclusive from The Guardian saying that Manchester United decide to sack Eric Ten Hag regardless of cup final outcome. United's 8th place league finish is their lowest since 1990. Move is the most significant made by Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his allies, of course, Ineos. Of course, this is the most typical Manchester United move, whether it's true or not. Just something like this leaking before a significant moment, which is this cup final. Eric Ten Hag has been under pressure for the entirety of the season. When you look at the results, not being able to pick up form at any part of this campaign. When you look at the... the the vast contrast went from 22-23 to 23-24. So much differences. You've got injuries. You've got a lack of adaptation in terms of the tactical setup of the team. Players out of form. Players being out of, you know, ousted. <laughs> like, so much drama has gone on in this campaign. Some you can blame Eric Ten Hag for. Some you can't blame Eric Ten Hag for as much. But nonetheless, everybody is a part of it, including the players, including Ten Hag, the coaching staff, the ownership, everybody above too. And there are massive changes going on in regards to Ineos. Some things that I'm not going to like, I haven't liked. I haven't liked. I've been this wait and see thing when it comes to this Ineos part takeover of the club. There are some things that are starting to creep in that I'm, I'm concerned about. But... I guess we'll have to continue to see what, what goes on, what happens at the end of the day. But it's a massive day, right? Rematch of the FA Cup final from last season. When you look at Manchester City's record unbeaten in their last 35 matches across all competition, only that Nottingham Forest team of the late 70s had a longer run, which was 40. So they're closing in on that record too. When you look at the, the defeat last year, 2-1, Ilke Gundogan is not here, not at Manchester City anymore. But he scored a quick goal, shocked Manchester United. And as they were able to get back into the game, he eventually scored the winner as well in the second half. And you think about how can Manchester United beat a Manchester City team who, at the business end of the season, are so efficient, are so ruthless, are the best team in the world in club football. Ultimately, things go out of the window when I think about this because Manchester United, I know, haven't been able to conjure up a top high-level performance. When I look at the Bruno Fernandes Player Tribune release, the little post speaking about his passion for the club Manchester United, how it was always a dream, even more than a dream, to come and play for this club Manchester United and, and achieve and to win trophies and to become the captain. You want to believe that the guy that is going to be leading out the troops is going to be able to lift every single one of those guys up. But just me being me, I've been low. I've been very low for the for a large part of this campaign because I've just not, I haven't seen the point. Of lifting my expectations, ultimately. One win, cool. Can we get two? Can we get three? Can we get four? We're at the point of no return now. It's just one game and one win. Biggest game of the season. Can you get that done? Can you rise to the occasion in a big game? Manchester City did the double against us this season. After we beat them 2-1 last season. I believe it was at some point after the World Cup. We, we lose 2-1 in the FA Cup final. They win 3-0 in the Premier League this season. And they win 3-1 in the reverse fixture at the Etihad. Phil Foden has scored three goals against us. Erling Haaland has a couple. Marcus Rashford scored that belter to, I believe, take the lead in that uh, final Premier League fixture for us. But it wasn't enough, ultimately. He did have some more chances we kind of were wasteful after that point and Manchester City did what they did do best. You know, under Pep Guardiola, 
you never say never against a team like that. A team that used to be referred to as our noisy neighbours. And right now we are the ones trying to get back into the picture and we are failing miserably on all cylinders. It's not even close. Finishing eighth this season, as, as I mentioned, I believe at the start, one of the worst finishes in Premier League history, the worst finish in the Premier League for Manchester United, an all-time low, no European spot. We're relying on this game and winning this game to even get a spot in the Europa League. But when I look at Manchester United, the characteristics that I'd use is lackadaisical, inconsistent, inefficient, a lack of adaptation. And I know I added a couple more words, but that, that's really been the main theme for me. When I look at the coaching, when I look at the players, I, I, it screams inefficiency in the system that you're playing in. And, and a part of that is the lack of adaptation to the personnel that you've had on the pitch all season long. How do you fix that? It, it, it's, it's too late to drastically change all of a sudden. So now it's about the performances on the pitch and how you're able to rise to that FA Cup final occasion. How you're able to rise to that Manchester derby occasion. How you're able to avenge a loss a year ago that stung hard. Manchester United Cup Finals. Loss in the FA Cup. We obviously won the Carabao Cup last season. But we're looking at heartbreak against, was it Villarreal? In the Europa League final under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We lost an FA Cup final against Chelsea. We've been losing a lot of cup finals in recent times. And now would be the perfect moment to turn it around, potentially. Now, I don't know how serious, how truthful you are taking this exclusive by Jacob Steinberg. But if there was a 50-50 chance of Eric Ten Hag saving his job, depending on the way, not just, not just the result, but the way Manchester United could potentially gain a, a victory here, a crucial victory. Eric Ten Hag should be taking this one 100% seriously, which I'm sure he is. And so should the players. Because, ultimately, Ineos will be making their changes this summer. I'm sure he is under evaluation. There will be players leaving this summer. There will be a, a whole load of changes at Manchester United. And like I said earlier on, some things that I, I have not liked. There are negative signs to this. But, and it is a big but, if Eric Ten Hag is to survive, he needs to provide a reason to the travelling fans, to the fans at home. And of course, to Ineos, provide them a reason for them to say, we can see a future in which you will be successful. After the first season, I'm sure plenty of, plenty of people were saying that. Come on. Let's not be revisionists here. But ultimately, towards the end of that campaign, there were negative signs towards the beginning of this campaign. There were negative signs and throughout the entirety of 2023-24, it's been nothing but red flags. So how do you turn it into an amber? How do you turn it into a green so quickly, ladies and gentlemen? We're just going to have to wait and see. What I will say is catch me later on at 2.45 p.m. for the watch along over here on CM22 ENT. We're going to be watching the game in real time to see if Manchester United can bring it home. Oh, I wish. I do wish. And, and also look out for me and Cappy's reaction afterwards. The United Twins will be back on deck. I'm sure the morning after. If we can't get it out there the same day. So look out for that one also, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope to see you guys at the Watch Along today, later today at 2.45 p.m. live UK time. Get some score predictions in the comments. Let me know how you feel the game is going to go. It's a big game. Never too high. Never too low. 
Stay in the middle. And see where that takes us, huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hit a like. Subscribe if you're new. Hope and pray. I'll see you not in a bit.